are endowed by our Creator with rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which nobody, no person, no group, no political party, not even our government, can take away from us. Hitler had a dream that his big business should dominate the world. He called his dream the New Order. We've already amended the Constitution dozens of times. Let's throw it away for a master plan run by a master state. Morgan is the largest group. Then there is the strong Kuhn Loeb group, the Mellon interests, which have Westinghouse, DuPont with General Motors, and then there is Rockefeller and three other groups making up a grand total of some $82 billion assets in 1945. Eight groups control the American economy, not only because of their concentration of wealth, but through their strategic ownership of basic industries. In spite of war, these companies operate internationally through subsidiaries, stock participation, and cartel agreements with various other companies. Have you ever heard of the Bilderberg Group? No. No, no, never. Have you ever heard of uh, the Bilderberg Group? No. Nope. No, I haven't. No, I haven't heard of that. I don't know too much about that Bilderberg thing. Have you guys ever heard about a group called uh, the Bilderberg Group? No. Nope. Yeah, for the most part. I have not. Sounds kind of familiar, but I couldn't tell you what it was. No, never heard of them. Have you ever heard of a, uh, a group called the Bilderberg Group? No, I haven't. The Build-A-Bird? Uh, Build-A-Bird? A uh, Bilderberg with a G, yeah. Uh, no. Oh. Well, like an iceberg? <laughs> no, no, not quite. Well, what would you say if I told you it's a group of about 120 people on average who meet once a year. Uh, these are politicians, heads of media, military men, heads of finance. They meet once a year in, in secret, uh, behind closed doors, discussing foreign policy. What would you think? What would I think? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think that's a good thing, a bad thing? Do you agree with it, disagree? Um, is there anything wrong with, with some of the most powerful and influential people in the world meeting behind closed doors and discussing things in secret? Not really, no. It's a smart thing to get as many brains in a room as you can to discuss things. And uh, if you're going to have open and, and honest dialogue, uh, sometimes that information should be uh, kept within the room. If they're going to make good and careful decisions on, on political initiatives, they need to be able to uh, meet with the brightest minds in the country. And uh, I don't think necessarily that we need to be inside that meeting. I just tend not to recognize their power and just to like, Pretend they don't exist because for all intents and purposes they don't in my world. Like no matter how much harm they do or how much good they think they do, like I really couldn't care less. In the spring of 1954, Joseph Redinger, a Polish political advisor and founder of the European movement that would lead to the founding of the European Union, started the Bilderberg Group, an informal and off-the-record conference for political and business elites from European and Western nations. With the help of Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, along with other powerful politicians and businessmen, they organized the first annual Bilderberg meeting at the Hotel de Bilderberg in Oosterbeek, Netherlands. The Prince, a former executive for IG Farben and a former Nazi SS party member before the war, was also an influential executive in the oil industry, working for Royal Dutch Petroleum. As a member of the Dutch royal family and the father of the current matriarch and fellow Bilderberger Queen Beatrix, Bernhardt was a very powerful and influential member of the European community. The original stated goals of the Bilderberg Group were to bring together the leaders of business, finance and politicians from Europe and Western nations in a forum that would allow for candid and frank discussions of international issues without the fear of being quoted or recorded. Thus, the meetings are held in secret and are by invitation only. For almost 60 years, the Bilderberg Group has been meeting behind closed doors in luxury hotels around the world to discuss in secret their plan for global control of world events and markets. Over the years, their members have included heads of state, politicians, business executives, media moguls, global financiers, military leaders, intelligence agencies, 
and many other powerful organizations and individuals whose reach extends to every corner of the world. Some notable members have included the Rothschild banking family, Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands, Prince Philip and Prince Charles of the British royal family, international financier David Rockefeller, and former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. The members of the Bilderberg Group have such an influence over the media that until recent years, their name and existence has been quietly kept from the general public through a veritable media blackout. With the advent of new social media tools and advances in technology, the independent media has been exposing these annual meetings on an increasing scale. We have reached the turning point. The Bilderberg Group is now finding it almost impossible to stay out of the spotlight and hide their powerful cabal from the public. the 99%, but it's really the 99.99999% because the people that are in here, they're not one out of a hundred, they're not one out of a thousand, they're not one out of 10,000, a hundred thousand, they're more like one out of a million or 10 million or beyond that, okay? That's right. It's the billionaire and trillionaire club and you and I, we're not in it, we're not ever going to be in it, so we got to hold their feet to the fire. We've got to expose what's going on here. We've got to find out who the 2012 attendees are, and we've got to keep our eyes on the headlines in the next coming weeks, months, and even years to see what these associations have done geopolitically, because they'll be in the headlines. When you have someone like Davignon claiming, and not really claiming because he's on the inside, he would know better than you and I, that the Bilderberg Group was instrumental in creating the European Union and the Euro. I would say that's a pretty big deal. And whether that's evil or not, that's a geo political move and that decision was made by this group. What you need to do is look up who are the companies they work for, who else have they worked for, what are their agendas, what are they in the news doing that will tell you so much about the reach of Bilderberg, about why they invite these people, and about how they put the world together. In the case of Europe, you heard that quote, Goldman Sachs rules the world, where you've got Peter Sutherland, head of Goldman Sachs International Board of Directors out of Ireland. He's telling them to accept the austerity and the other financial plans. Throughout history, we've had people with power attempting to consolidate their power and hold on to it. So that's really the agenda here. The agenda is to stay as powerful as possible for as long as possible and crush any competition. Morning, criminal globalist ahead. FBI! Thank you. 
In recent years, the lack of coverage from the mainstream media on the Bilderberg Group has been a problem as far as raising awareness about these conferences. However, 2012 is a major turning point for the Bilderberg Group as the independent media have been here providing the coverage that's been lacking from the mainstream. Where's Fox News been for the last 15 years? CNN for the last 20 years? Why does Sean Hannity ridicule anybody that calls in and asks about the significance of the Bilderberg Group? Obviously, they're on the payroll. When people say that, quote, they control the media, they're talking about the secret establishment. I'm just here to cover the Bilderberg Conference and try to do what the mainstream media is lacking. Uh, it's not fair to say that there's no coverage of Bilderberg because even some of the Bilderberg-owned outlets in the mainstream media have covered it, but it's been so far and few between that I think it's important for us as people, as citizens, and as journalists, as professionals, to come down here ourselves and investigate it. I'm definitely down here just to protest the real 1% that's meeting here at the Westfields Marriott behind closed doors. We're not seeing any major media out here. Where's CNN? Where's the mainstream media? Where's Fox, MSNBC? Any of these stations, they are not here. The mainstream media is owned by these people. Uh, there's only a handful of what you call mainstream media covering this uh, because this isn't supposed to exist. Our media, until just about five years ago, said that Bilderberg did not even exist. It's been definitely incredible seeing so many people come all over the world just to participate in bringing awareness to the Bilderberg Group. It's by far the largest Bilderberg protest that I have ever seen. A lot of alternative media, a lot of attention being brought to the Bilderbergers. Uh, the mainstream media is failing, but the alternative people's media is becoming the mainstream media, and we're proving that by covering Bilderberg. We want to make sure that we can get documentation of the attendees just to have a confirmation of who is in attendance. Once you know, um, you can absolutely confirm who is in attendance. You can have a better feel for what are some of the things that are going to be discussed. The Bilderberg Club was founded by Nazis after World War II with their European cohorts in the United States to try to bring in a one world government. These people are terrorists. 110%. The government has been usurped and completely hijacked. The United States flag is not hanging upside down in distress. The flag was taken a long time ago. The Washington Post was here this morning. They've known about it since the very beginning because their founders, Catherine Graham, and now her son, Donald Graham, come every single year without fail. They're not talking about it. We have to. We will, and uh, people are paying attention to that. And uh, they tr they're starting to trust us, and uh, every day we're getting bigger and bigger. The media moguls here that do participate at the Bilderberg meeting are failing. They're not successful at all in any way, shape, or form. Their businesses, their, their whole enterprises are failing. And what you see is people rising up. There has to be at least 500 people here now and the veteran who was arrested yesterday was just arrested again uh, large people gathering in front of where uh, the Bilderberg members inside the building can actually hear the people outside and that's where a group of uh, police officers grabbed this guy, same guy from yesterday, and it, it appears that they are uh, making a, an example and uh, trying to uh, 
keep everybody away from the area where uh, the people inside can definitely hear everything that is going on. We're bullhorning in Bilderberg. They send cops down to stand behind us. We turn and they just arrest somebody for no reason to get us to chase them down the street. They grab him, take him away like prey. We run out to follow after. The whole world is watching! The whole world is watching! The whole world is watching! The whole world is watching. This group is meeting with government officials. It violates federal law, the Logan Act. And for decades, they said it didn't even exist. This is the real oligarchs that run our government, run Europe, run most of the world to the big central banks and the fraud that they engage in. These are the real tyrants. So we're identifying them, not the puppet presidents and prime ministers. We're going directly to the financial oligarch, the robber barons. In 2008, it was revealed that the Canadian government, under the leadership of Bilderberg member Stephen Harper, would be buying $25 billion worth of mortgage pools through the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. Shortly after the election in October of 2008, the re-elected Harper Conservatives unilaterally announced the government will purchase up to an additional $50 billion of insured mortgage pools by the end of the fiscal year as a part of its ongoing efforts to maintain the availability of longer-term credit in Canada. This action will increase to $75 billion, the maximum value of securities purchased through Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. There was no debate in the Canadian Parliament over whether to hand out $75 billion in taxpayer money to the private chartered banks, nor was it covered by the Bilderberg-controlled mainstream media. The control of the Bilderberg Group extends not only to the media and the control of information, but also to the Canadian banking system itself and our ability to control our own currency. In 1938, Prime Minister William Lyon Mackenzie King nationalized the Bank of Canada, giving control of the Canadian currency to the people of Canada. Although the issuance of currency is held solely by the Bank of Canada, the creation of credit through the issuance of loans is still largely controlled by private chartered banks. As part of the Bank of Canada's charter, the government can borrow up to 50% of its own money from the Bank of Canada at 0% interest. The other half of the interest is paid back into the government, allowing for the financing of our own infrastructure, such as the St. Lawrence Seaway and the Trans-Canada Highway. Because of Bilderberg member Paul Martin, Canada now borrows its money from the private chartered banks at the going interest rate effectively handing over the usury and interest to private corporations. Prior to Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, all banks had to hold an 8% reserve, meaning they could lend out the same money 12 and a half times through credit and loans. Mulroney dropped this to a 0% reserve, allowing private banks to loan as much money as they want, simply by entering a new line on a ledger. Currently, the Bank of Canada is only responsible for 5% of the actual debt created in the form of currency. The private chartered banks, such as Royal Bank of Canada and TD Bank, own the remaining 95% of all debt. Think of how much control this amounts to when you consider all of the digital payment and loan options used today, such as credit cards, debit cards, internet payments, RFID chips, smartphone purchases, and even biometric identification, which is now used in India for bank withdrawals. Very few people use real currency, and the trend is turning to an increasing reliance on digital and computer technologies, of which are largely controlled by members of the Bilderberg Group. Members of the Bilderberg Group who are involved in the Canadian banking system include President and CEO of Royal Bank of Canada, Gordon Nixon President and CEO of TD Bank Financial Group, Edmund Clark Deputy Chair of TD Bank Financial Group and former Canadian Ambassador to the United States, Frank McKenna 
former Minister of Finance and Director of Manulife Financial, Michael Wilson. Managing Director of Credit Suisse Securities, Ronald S. Lloyd. Former CEO of Scotiabank, Peter C. Godso. Former Governor of the Bank of Canada, David A. Dodge and Governor of the Bank of Canada and former Goldman Sachs executive, Mark Kearney. 501c3 tax exempt foundations have to make certain forms publicly available. And so somebody tipped me off about this, that the 990 forms are available for the Bilderberg Group. And I got the years 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, well, first of all, they're operating under the 501c3 tax exempt name American Friends of Bilderberg. The 2008 forms also show a list of very interesting donors. Henry Kissinger, $20,000. David Rockefeller, $50,000. Freeport McMormon Foundation, ten dollars Microsoft, $75,000. Peter Thiel from PayPal, $75,000. Goldman Sachs, $25,000. The Washington Post, $25,000. So of course the Washington Post is gonna be reluctant to report on them when they are literally funding them and I have the proof in my hand. Other large donors of the Bilderberg Group include $25,000 from Lazard, a large investment bank which is based in New York's Rockefeller Center. Lazard is one of the key players in the Bilderberg finances, attending dozens of meetings over the years. Another large donor and regular attendee to Bilderberg is co-founder of Kohlberg Kravis Robertson Company, Henry Kravis. KKR is a private equity firm with over $62 billion in assets as of 2011. Kravis donated $50,000 in 2008 to the Bilderberg Group. Billionaire financier David Rockefeller of Chase Manhattan Bank has been a steady donor to the Bilderberg meetings and has been a cornerstone of the group's development attending nearly every conference since its inception in 1954. Rockefeller is an honorary lifetime chairman of the Bilderberg Group and has been involved in the development of many other powerful globalist think tanks, such as the Trilateral Commission and the Council on Foreign Relations. In 1965, David Rockefeller gave a speech to the International Industrial Conference in San Francisco, where he said, we have entered upon an era in which interdisciplinary cooperation on a worldwide basis must be the cornerstone of accomplishment. Each of us has the duty to fashion his own contribution to fit the grand design of a global community. For many of us, the marketplace of tomorrow will be no less than this whole planet of Earth. What we do will manifest itself in ways that we cannot foretell and it will have an unforeseen impact upon individual lives and whole societies. What we are is God's gift to man. What we become is man's gift to God. The Rockefeller-Rothschild merger that just occurred yesterday obviously had some uh, things in the works before then, but for those that don't know, uh, the Rothschilds have bought up 37% of uh, uh, the main financial institute of the Rockefellers. They're going to uh, be talking about swallowing up smaller financial institutions, like they say in the article. Essentially, they see opportunity in crisis, and we've known some smaller banks, uh, a lot of smaller banks have gone down in the last two or three years. Well, now they're consolidating power. They're going to buy up those smaller banks and don't be surprised if you see them bail out or take a large stake in some of the bigger banks that have been having problems, such as maybe even Bank of America and J.P. Morgan. A lot of these globalists, a lot of these Bilderbergers are on the record saying that they want global depopulation and they're proud of it. War criminal Henry Kissinger has stepped foot 
in the Westfield Marriott Hotel in Chantilly, Virginia. We have him on video entering the hotel, and we would like for you gentlemen to go inside the hotel and arrest Kissinger for his war crimes. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger has been deeply involved in the Bilderberg Group, attending dozens of their meetings over the years and acting on the Bilderberg Steering Committee. Kissinger faces allegations of war crimes for his involvement in the secret bombing campaign that took place in Cambodia during the Vietnam War in the 1970s. It is alleged that Kissinger willfully engaged in the murder of tens of thousands of civilians in various areas of Cambodia, which led to the destabilization of the country into a civil war, resulting in the rise of the infamous Khmer Rouge. Kissinger is also wanted in several countries for his involvement in supporting the Pinochet regime and the CIA-backed coup that took place in Chile on September 11, 1973. Pinochet, who is now facing a war crimes tribunal, murdered the democratically elected President Salvador Allende and started a military junta, which resulted in the kidnapping, forced displacement, and torture of thousands of men, women, and children in Chile. Henry Kissinger actively supported these actions that were taking place at that time, which constituted crimes against humanity. Kissinger was also involved in a controversial study in 1974 called National Security Study Memorandum 200, in which the basic thesis called for an active campaign for the depopulation of several less developed countries to stem the risk for civil unrest. Are you still giving out orders like Memorandum 200, where you said depopulation should be the hell? Sorry, just a question. I'm not going to go to hell, because Memorandum 200, sir? Where did you Memorandum 200? Just ask him a question about Memorandum 200 that he wrote in April 24, 1974. It's an honest question. Okay. Kissinger, Memorandum 200. Depopulation. We're on topic now. We I came know. here, we give you the access. If you want to burn bridges, you can do that. I don't want to burn any bridges. I didn't, I wasn't disrespectful. I wasn't accusatory. It was a serious question. We're on topic. Okay, I understand that. So, what about the depopulation? I mean, Memorandum 200. Uh, why, why, why are you afraid to talk why about your depopulation plan? Why don't you get lost? Why should I get lost? It's serious. You're a sick person. Sick person. How am I sick? You're the one committing. Oh. I hope it's the beginning of a whole new epoch of greater and greater coverage. At the same time, we're in danger because of their designs on the internet. This could also be the high watermark. It really depends on who stands their ground and what the fight will be. Uh, because of course, we've just broke last week, people from the European Commission, the Dutch woman Neely Crows, wants a mandatory internet ID for Europe. Cybercom was launched only two years ago. We saw the Stuxnet virus admittedly engineered from the US and Israeli and other related allies to use against Iran and so forth. On that pretext, they want to take greater and greater control of the web. The United Nations also trying to have a reach over the web. The Bilderberg Group include many prominent members of the internet and computing world, including National Security Agency Director and Chief of the United States Cyber Command, General Keith B. Alexander. Co-founder of Facebook, Chris Hughes, Founder of PayPal and chief Facebook investor, Peter Thiel. Executive chairman of Google, Eric Schmidt. Founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Co-founder of LinkedIn, Reid Hoffman. Vice President, European Commission. Commissioner for Digital Agenda, Neely Crows. Chief Research and Strategy Officer, Microsoft Corporation, Craig J. Mundy. And many others. More and more we're seeing the iron curtain of media censorship on Bilderberg and the shadow government, shadow elite, pulled back. So we're seeing Bilderberg basically try to pass the baton off to younger people right now, a bunch of tech folks, Google, Facebook, and others, hoping that the police state uh, tech grid can protect their criminal activity. Uh, they're trying to push a global bank as the solution uh, to all our problems that they created. Uh, they're openly trying to push more police state 
systems, they want to end internet freedom, they want to bring in internet IDs. The mainstream media is no longer mainstream, the alternative is taking over, and they're trying their damnedest to either restrict or shut down the free internet as we know it right now. The increase of internet-based media has been closely correlated with the decrease of traditional forms of media, such as newspapers and television, which have been monopolized by members of the Bilderberg Group. In their efforts to maintain the control of information globally, influential figures of the media have been routinely invited to participate in the conferences over the years. Peter Mansbridge of CBC's The National attended the meeting in 2010 and has maintained their strict rules for secrecy ever since. Fellow Canadian Heather Reisman is the CEO of Indigo Books, the largest book supplier in Canada, and she is a member of the Bilderberg Steering Committee. In 2005, Reisman founded the Hesag Foundation, which provides grants to former lone soldiers in the Israeli army to pursue post-secondary education. A lone soldier is an individual who is not from Israel, but chooses to fight in the Israeli military. Other media moguls and organizations that have attended the Bilderberg meetings over the years have included Rupert Murdoch of News Corporation, Andrew Knight of News Corporation and The Economist, Ted Turner of Time Warner and CNN, Charlie Rose, Donald Graham of The Washington Post, and Canadian media baron and former Bilderberg Steering Committee member Conrad Black of Hollinger International and The Telegraph newspaper. While all of these powerful media organizations have been present at Bilderberg meetings over the years, there has remained a media blackout all across the board regarding coverage of this group. Hi. Hi. I was just uh, wondering uh, what your opinions were. You talked a little bit about it in the book of uh, the influence of the Bilderberg Group on uh, the mainstream media, or on just the influence. Yeah, 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 there are a lot, the individuals are influential, but they don't. Their influence isn't magnified by Bilderberg. I went for 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's just a talking shop, and they're almost always wrong. By the way, they didn't see the end of the Cold War coming. They didn't see the economic crisis coming. They're very interesting meetings. They're very interesting people, but they're not coherent. They aren't a group that meets other than for three days a year, and the composition of them changes all the time, except for about 30 of us who are on the steering committee. And how come... And don't buy into these conspiracy theories. It's rubbish. All they do is talk to each other. I, I was on that conference circuit for 20 years, the Trilateral Commission, and I went to all of them. And, uh, yeah, look, it was fine while it lasted, but I'm getting too old for that. I'm getting mm -hmm. tired. But, okay. You know. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thanks right. for coming. But there's no conspiracy in any of them. No. no. No, there's a bunch of people. How come you don't ever hear about it in the media? Like, I only read well, about they, it in your book. They don't allow the media. No. But in order to encourage people to talk frankly, so which you do, you get good frank sessions. Hmm. But but there's no there's no meeting of the minds particularly. Hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. Fellow Hollinger International Board of Directors member Marie Jose Kravis has made significant inroads since being invited to Bilderberg by Conrad Black in 1989. Marie Jose is the wife of Bilderberg member Henry Kravis and has been a member of the Bilderberg Steering Committee for over 22 years. At the trial of the now defunct media baron Conrad Black, Marie Jose Kravis testified against him, providing evidence for the prosecution. Other prominent Canadians who have attended the Bilderberg conferences include former Prime Minister of Canada Lester B. Pearson, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, Jean Chrétien, Paul Martin, and Stephen Harper. Many other influential Canadian politicians and business leaders have also attended the secret meetings, including former NDP leader Bob Ray, former Liberal Party leaders Stefan Dion and Michael Ignatieff, former Premier of Ontario Mike Harris, former Premier of New Brunswick 
Bernard Lord, former Premier of British Columbia, Gordon Campbell, the Premier of Alberta, Alison Redford, the Chief of Staff for Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Nigel S. Wright, and Power Corporation of Canada CEO, Paul Desmarais Sr. In fact, nearly every Canadian Prime Minister back to Pierre Elliott Trudeau has worked for Power Corp. I attended one Bilderberg meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not sure they ever invited me back, but the uh, but uh, but just to make sure, I've also gone to a Maple Leaf hockey game. That doesn't mean I'm a Maple Leaf fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I believe that there is an opportunity now with the G20 having been, having been called for the first time for us to put together a global steering committee of all the great powers of the world. If I was asked what is the single most important thing that can be done to get us out of this mess, it is going to be to recognize now that we are one common humanity, divided perhaps into economic entities all countries. The time has come for us to work together. In 1996, you were at uh, a Bilderberg meeting, and also there was uh, Jean Chrétien and uh, Paul Martin. I don't know if I was at that meeting. I've only been to a few of them, but I... Uh... Bilderberg and Toronto are not really think tanks. They, they're, they're simply individuals who get together who are from um, business, the political world, the media, others, and discuss ideas. And they influence each other through that. Shortly after Dan and Steve got back from the Bilderberg meeting in Chantilly, I decided to file some Access to Information Act requests um, for information on both Alison Redford, the Premier of Alberta, and for Nigel S. Wright, who is the Chief of Staff for Prime Minister Stephen Harper. I received uh, two notices. Uh, one was for Nigel S. Wright, and it actually revealed very little. They just said that they didn't have any record of him having attended the Bilderberg meeting in Chantilly, even though he was on the official attendees list. In 2011, the Harper government decided to amend the Access to Information Act and privacy request forms, making it so that anybody that was on the Prime Minister's cabinet was exempt uh, from releasing any personal information. In the case of Alison Redford, the Premier of Alberta, I did receive actually quite a big disclosure from their Executive Council office in Alberta. 31 pages uh, were disclosed to me just the other day. All sorts of different pages have notices to destroy these emails, do not release this information to the public, do not release any information about your travel itinerary prior to attending the meeting. But a lot of the stuff is redacted. A lot of this information is redacted out. That's cited under different sections of the uh, Privacy Protection Act, which is um, goes hand in hand with the Access to Information Act request. So any other information that was in there about other people has been redacted out. There's also uh, a page in here that describes the nature of the meetings off the record. Fruitful discussions are enhanced by an atmosphere of mutual trust in which participants can express themselves freely. All discussions are therefore private and off the record. The press is excluded from the meetings. A list of participants will be released to the press on the eve of the conference. There's nothing to hide. If you're doing good things, you don't have anything to hide. There's only something to hide if you don't want people hearing what you're saying. That's the only reason to say it off the record is that you wouldn't want to be quoted on something that could be damaging to your career. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its means to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. How do you feel about secrecy in government? Uh... <laughs> it's a scary thing. I mean, it's secret, so I don't really know much about it. I can understand if the secrecy is for, for national security, but, you know, secrecy and covering up, you know, financial documents and things like that. I think as taxpayers, you know, we we have the right to, to know what's going on in our government. I think secrecy is pretty inherent in the Canadian government, for sure, uh, and in all government. Uh, 
I wish it wasn't that way. I wish government was completely democratic, which would mean that we would be a part of it. But seeing as like we have representatives in this house deciding on issues for us, secrecy kind of just comes with that. I honestly don't think it's a good idea for anybody to be secret. I don't think anything should be secret. I think if anything needs to be said, it needs to be said in front of the people here that can hear it. We elect people to, to govern us in a democratic way. And when those people fall, you know, prey to, you know, individuals that have money or, you know, have leverage on them, uh, it just, it's no different than a dictatorship. When you have, like, government officials and then you have financiers and, like, heads of, like, banks meeting behind closed doors, that's already against the law. So there's a lot of things happening that I think the people need to wake up to and actually come out and stand against it. This is the job of you guys to get out there and inform the real people that need to know what's really going on because we have really no idea and without you guys we wouldn't be around to know so. The more independent media that covers events like this or like anything gives a more unbiased opinion considering how slanted our current media is. It doesn't have to be a you know massive media tycoon that's controlling what's what's being said anymore you know the, the average person can, can do it right which is I mean you know, that's, that's an amazing feat. We, we didn't have that 50 years ago. We didn't have that at all. It's, it's time to get it out there. We should at least know. We should at least know. Technology is a double-edged sword, and with the use of social media and live streaming, the independent media is now shining a bright light on the shadows of the Bilderberg Group. Almost everybody here has a camera. They're all doing live streaming. They're all, you know, interviewing people. I mean, there is just everywhere from, you know, really big names with big websites to just people doing their own little thing. And it's crazy. I mean, everybody has a camera this year. We live in the time of intelligence, of technology, of instant information. And more and more, these people are realizing that, and they're going to realize that today with the hundreds of people that are surrounding the Marriott Hotel where Bilderberg 2012 is being held. What do you think about, you know, the, the independent media's these days' ability to use social media and, and live streaming at these kinds of events it's 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 amazing um, and it, it shows you uh, how many people that are getting aware and politically aware to this everyone's becoming the independent media because of the double-edged sword that is social media it's also of course a spy tool as everyone knows they're worried about us they're worried about you they're worried about every person out here with a cell phone that's able to broadcast live or put them video online, where in the decades past it would require an entire news crew and an assignment, tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Now we can do it standing out here with a cell phone. So their technology that they're using to bug us, their, their Orwellian nightmare, Big Brothers or surveillance systems, we're just turning it against them and showing them that we're watching. What we're seeing here in 2012 represents not just an evolution of social media, of independent media, of the ability of citizen journalists to bring attention to causes that the, and events that the mainstream media will refuse to cover. You had thousands and thousands of people watching live stream video, you know, they're interested. People are dying for real information, truth. We are able to pretty much broadcast to the world to thousands of people live, unedited, uh, uncut as everything's happening uh, pretty much just through a cell phone it's you know we're living in amazing times the technology is advancing it's like more than it's a protest it's almost an independent media summit you know there are at least 20 cameras here live streaming not all like with some central hub no 20 independent media outlets 20 individuals doing separate live streams. We are making a difference. We are forcing the mainstream media to cover these events, you know, and they are coming, kicking and screaming, but they are coming. If you had an opportunity to maybe say a short little message to the people in that room, the people sitting around that table, what might you say to them? That's a hard it's question. It's a tough one, I know, it's a tough one. I don't mean to put you on the spot, it, it is. Second. But if I could say anything to the Billabergers is when you do things in darkness, they will come to the light. And they are. We're here uh, just to shine that light. I don't hate you. I'm not going to spend my energy just to negatively go after you. But I will expose you and I will talk to you and I will communicate with you with words to try to um, make you and the world understand that there's a lot more going on than we actually know and we deserve to know what's happening. We're human beings, we're just as equal as you uh, and we're all, in this, we're all in this world together. Ladies and gentlemen, 
of the free world. We came out here for one reason and one reason only. We are sick and tired of being controlled. We are sick and tired of the elitists taking advantage of our trust, taking advantage of our apathy, and we will not put up with it anymore. My message to the globalist is, the sleeping giant that is humanity is awakening. It's 1776 against their 1984 worldwide. Their system of 1984 against the spirit of liberty. And they will be defeated. And they know it, and they're starting to run scared, and they should be, because information is power. And the truth is setting us free. We know who you are, and we're taking our fate back. We know who you are, and uh, we're going to expose you all the way so we're not stopping we're going to be growing in numbers 100 times this in the future so just wait just wait we're coming i'm sure you guys realize you know that this is the the fate of the planet you guys are, are in control one way or another people are finding out what's going on life is short we should live it to the fullest and treat people with respect honesty dignity and compassion and uh, you could change your life in any moment any time and just think about the decisions you're making and how they affect people and how they hurt people and understand there's real consequences for those uh, decisions that you guys have made that you guys will have to live with for an eternity pretty much. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, Satan said if you bow down and worship me I will give you the world. Well guess what? You've got the world and we're not going to bow down and worship you. Those filthy deeds that you have done in secret are now being shouted from the housetops. We are on to you. reach of the Bilderberg Group extends to every level of the policy apparatus in both the private and public sectors. Its members over the years have been the most influential and powerful individuals in the world. Whether or not they act in concert with each other or simply influence one another through these meetings is beside the point. The decisions made by each of these individuals have a ripple effect for the rest of the world. For every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. The creation of this new Orwellian technotronic society has spawned a new generation of warrior, information warriors, whose weapons are the very technologies created to enslave them. As the old forms of media slowly die away, this generation is finding new and exciting ways to spread information, open dialogue, and become the true citizen media. The Bilderberg Group and the individuals that attend are now facing a revolutionary adversary, an informed citizenry armed with the right questions and looking for the true answers.